All right. Uh, my name is Mike, and this is a live coding.tv stream. I am going to create a pattern in Title, which is a live coding environment for music and sound and other stuff. And I've done a lot of improv streams with Title in the uh, past on live coding.tv, and this will be the first time I'm going to actually try and explain. What I'm doing. So I am working on pattern 440 tonight. I have a past project called 365 title patterns uh, dot tumblr dot com, and I went past 365, and I'm now on 440. So yeah, I don't know what I'm going to create yet at all. I have no idea, and I'm just going to wing it. And uh, I do know that I want to use a few special functions in the new uh, release of Title that just came out uh, a couple days ago. I want to use the um, some of the new synth param operators and the stut prime function. So I, I don't even know what I want to start with. Let's see. Um, I guess I want to start with a good melodic sample. So uh, actually. I need to save this as a .title file. So uh, let's create our file. Now we can evaluate title stuff by having a title extension here in Atom. And let's see. So I need to pick a sample to work with. Let me open up my samples folder. And um yeah so i've got a lot of custom samples i don't really use the, the the default dirt library um maybe we will go with yeah i've got a kind of a strange sample here and let's set a tempo so it's not too fast all right so there's our sample and all right, so it's just playing a sample at 120 BPM. Let's do something like this. And I'll start to start. We'll do something like this. So um, actually we'll do that. So I'm gonna uh, use the stut prime function to um, uh, stutter the sample once after each time it's triggered and I'm gonna actually shorten the time. And this is the time between um, the original sample and the, the duplicated one. And then I'm gonna double the, the speed uh, that it's being played at. Yeah, there we go. Maybe I'll shorten the time a little bit. That's pretty high. There you go. And maybe we'll change the pattern up a little bit. We'll do something like this. Sound it's kind of interesting, kind of strange. <laughs> it's weird hearing myself in my headphones. I'm not used to that. Okay, so let's turn that off a little bit. All right, so that's that's kind of a start. Um, it's just a little too high. So let's let's change up to some negative values here. That's a little more pleasing, I guess. So, like I said, I have no plan here. I'm just kind of just 
kind of noodling around a little bit. So in addition to changing the speed, I'm going to maybe add some course. We'll do course 8. So that'll um, uh, change the sound to be, uh, I think it's going to apply some uh, bit reduction each on each stuttered value. All right, so, all right, that's a good start. Now, each time, I wanna make this a lot more dense. So, I'm thinking I wanna use like the, the gap, the gap function or the chop function or the stride function, maybe in combination with this. Um, so I could either put those before or after the stut um, I'm thinking maybe before. So if we do something like this, maybe, so if we try stripe uh, first. Sounds like that. All right. Nobody's on the stream, this is depressing. That's okay though, all right. All right, well, that's kind of interesting. Uh, all right, so that's kind of cool. So, so by adding the stride in there, it really uh, uh, breaks up the, the samples. Uh, if I add stride before, it's not too much different. So let's do this. Let's change, let's use slow spread, and then we will change every cycle how much the striate um, function is being applied. And that's a little too regular, so I don't know. I'm just kind of winging it. Maybe we'll juxt juxtapose that. Hey, we have guests in the room. Nice. Let's see what this does. All right, so that's that's okay. It's a little too regular. I like before I put the stride in, it just sounded like this. So I like the rhythmic feel of that. But when I put the striate in, it kind of has a nice effect. But I want that rhythmic feel back. So I'm going to try and maybe um, break apart the striate by shifting things around a bit. So let's say every, you know, every second, third, and fourth cycle, let's just kind of move stuff around. I have no idea if this is going to work, but we'll try it out. Yeah, it's just getting too spacey. I'm going to go back to the original here. All right, so that's kind of cool. So maybe, because I want to add some variation into this, but kind of keep a... A rhythmic feel to it so maybe instead if I modify like do a slow spread on this the stunt number or maybe the the duration so let's try that let's do a slow spread and then we're gonna have to do a lambda a lambda in Haskell yeah all right slow spread and then we'll do lambda I think the ending paren has to go at the end, and then we need an array of some value. Okay, so we put the so we've got x, and then we'll put x here for the the speed, and then in our 
array over, in our list of speeds, we can do something like this, I think. Does this work? Yep, okay. All right, that's kind of interesting. And then maybe we'll do 0 0.125 divided by two. I want to put this on a new line. All right, so that's that's working. So now the, the duration or the, the amount of time between each step is changing every cycle based on the values in this list. Uh, yeah, I just I just learned how to do these lambdas in Haskell a few like a week ago, and these are pretty cool. Um, it allows you to use slow spread on a parameter that's not at the end of a uh, function. So normally, if you use slow spread on something like um, you know, like the regular stut, uh, I'm getting like way off track here. But if I have let's say this and I want to do stut for something like this and if I do slow spread I can I can um, by default it'll just use the last the last parameter um, that we can put in a list the last parameter of the function okay you know what that didn't work. <laughs> All right, well, just forget everything I just said because that's not good. I don't know what I'm talking about. All right, back to this. Okay, so. All right, that's kind of interesting. So now. Yeah, I might be onto something. I'm not sure. <laughs> I don't know where I'm going with this, but that's that's the point. I I have no idea where this is going. So, all right, I've got this weird melody thing. Um, so I want to. I kind of feel like I want to add another element to this pattern. Um, let's see. I don't know. I could do something percussive or something more on the bass side. You know, I think I'll go on the bass side. So I like to use stack. So we'll put this in a stack. Um, all right, so let's add maybe some kind of a bass sound. So I've got, um, I've got a few bass sounds here I could use this B1 through B5. B also has some bass sounds in it. There's also, uh, where is it? B. Oh yeah, the BB. Anyway, whole bunch of bass stuff here I could use. So let's try. Um, I'm just gonna make this up. B two. We'll use B two. All right. That sounds good. So I think what I'm going to do is maybe use a different bass sound. Do B3 times 2. That's not too different. Actually, I've got another sample, BM, I think. Yeah. So uh, one little tip, all of my samples, I tend to tune to A. Uh, everything is in A and a lot of, it'll when I create multiple samples, sometimes I'll uh, put them in like an A minor scale or a, um, uh, I forget the name of the scale now. Uh, I base it off of A. So if I use multiple samples together, you know, I've got B2, BM1. You know, I created these at very different times, and this Lerm one as well. Um, 
I just stick with A, the key of A, A something, A minor, A major. I don't know. Um, at least I know my root note is going to work. So everything kind of sounds OK. All right, so that is starting to sound sufficiently strange, which is good. So now um, I think I want to use some more of the stut prime stuff here because that's what I'm into right now. Um, so I think what I want to do is instead of kind of a regular division of time, like a in quarters or eighths or sixteenths, like I'm doing here, uh, with this two five one two five and one two five divided by two, maybe try something with um, like four thirds or eight thir eight thirds or something like that. So let's do, you know, I'm actually going to break this out and test this first. So and I, this is not how I normally do patterns when I'm working on like a new quick pattern to learn something. I don't normally break stuff up like this. I usually just keep going uh, forever and I don't really stop the sound. But um, since I'm streaming, it's totally different um, for whatever that's worth. All right, so here's this base thing going on. So let's take, we'll do stut prime and then, um, you know, I think I'm going to take this double note out. We'll just do single notes and then um, we'll do four thirds. Yeah, four thirds for the time. And then uh, I guess, why don't we do speed 1.5? We'll do up. 1.5. Actually, we'll do up two. And so that's it. Sound it's kind of hard to hear that that time that four thirds time without like a beat behind it. So I'm not exactly sure what that's going to sound like. So let's maybe put a kick drum in there because I can't really hear this. Oh, yeah, that's kind of cool. So I want to try 1.5 as well here. Yeah, OK. Stut two. Well, that does not sound like I thought it would. One point. Yeah, I'm just kind of messing around, um, trying to find a like a, a tempo and set of pitches that kind of might sound interesting here. Um, I think, yeah, I haven't used the stut prime function that much, and it's starting to seem like it ha you have some cooler effects if it's faster, maybe. Um, I don't know. That's not where I want to go with this. <laughs> All right, so I'm going to paste that up here. And I don't think this is really going to be the direction I want to go, but let's just see what it sounds like. Yeah, I don't know about that. Let's come up with something different.
All right, let's put that up here and see what that sounds like. <laughs> All right, that's kind of interesting, I guess. Now I'm gonna put the base, um, the sec that second part of this, I'm gonna move it down an octave here. That's, that's really busy, actually. Uh, all right, I'm gonna ditch that whole idea. You know, I'm, what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna put this this lerm part, and I'm actually gonna make this. I'm gonna add a, a second pitch to that and, and pitch it down an octave here. Whew. Hmm. It did not sound how I expected it to. Wow. Oh. Yeah, it's because I'm using up here. Okay, so if I want to do that, then I need to do minus 12. Yeah, I just, yeah, it's just not going quite in the right direction. Let's see. So, I'm starting to think that maybe I should make these speeds even faster and maybe double this up with with another lambda to to change how many are being played. So I've got three, maybe pattern out this second parameter or this first parameter of stop prime as well. This would be crazy if this works. Okay, so we'll do um divided by four, and then this one will change to 1.25 divided by eight. All right, so that's going faster. So, uh, okay, how do I do this? So, can I, can I even nest two lambdas together? I think I can, so if I do like Y, man, am I even thinking of this right? And then make this Y, and then that? No, that doesn't work. Mm. So I'm basically trying to put a lambda within a lambda, and my strategy is not working here. So let's back up. Let me think about this one more time. Get back to where I was. Oh yeah, let's put the eight back in there. Okay. So let's see. Hmm. I don't know if he, he's got to be. It's got to be a way to do this, or like have two. I don't know. I'm a C sharp guy, so like this would be like the C sharp way of notating it. I I'm not a Haskell developer, so let's just let's just guess. Does this even work? No, I mean, I don't even know where to put that thing then. Have another array? There's no way this would work. Let's just try it. No, no. Okay. So, well, what do you know? C sharp concepts do not translate to Haskell. Okay. So, hmm. Not sure how I would do that. So, okay, fine. So I'm slowly starting to derail and I'm not making much progress. All right, so all right, I'm going to go to a percussive element here. Let's just let's just change course here. Um, I've got a sample called untuned that I haven't used for a long time. And we'll just All 
right, so some percussion is maybe a little bit more inspiring. So now I think um, I want to try and use Stut Prime in this scenario as well. Um, not quite sure what I want to do with it, but let's try. I don't know. What's something interesting we could do with percussion and Stut Prime? We could do, uh, we could do some panning or course. Um, I'm open to suggestions, dear viewers. Um, what are some other synth params we could do? Oh, we could do like some accelerate or something. You know, I've not tried accelerate with the stuck prime yet. Yeah, that sounds like a good idea. Um, so we'll multiply by two. Maybe minus two. Yeah, that's kind of cool. I'm gonna put that bass back in. So now I kind of feel like working, uh, changing up the pitch of this this Lerm sample a bit. So I added this reverse, and now for up, let's let's put something in up here. So maybe I don't know when mod six three subtract four maybe. <laughs> All right, so that, that's kind of cool. Uh, so I'm going to apply the same pitch change here uh, in uh, for the bass as well, so that the bass and the the Lerm sample are the same, uh, so that they change at the same time. Yeah. Yeah. There we go. All right, so I was trying to do a lambda, uh, the two lambdas here with Stut Prime. I, I couldn't quite get that to work. I'm going to add a, a lambda here with the duration. I'm sorry, with the number of stuts. So let's let's just see what this does. If I do, uh, yeah. That goes there. No, 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 no. That will go here, and then put our X there, and uh. <laughs> All right, so all right, so I just added some crazy crazy rhythmical stuff. So I am using the slow spread to change how many dot how many times the sample is repeated here. And then I just started messing with the accelerate uh, pattern a bit to to vary up um, to vary how much it's how much it's accelerated on each stuttered value. Um, yeah, so let's see. <laughs> All right, so 
the next thing I want to try and go back to maybe uh, making this lerm sample a little bit more complex by uh, I, I tried adding the striate stuff before, but now I'm going to maybe use gap just to see what this sounds like. Um, I'm trying to put the different parts on different each on their own line, which is kind of my style. Um, so I've got my percussion up here and I've got the the lerm sample here. So I, I added gap here. Which I'm not hearing much of a difference. listening there for a bit um all right i'm not quite getting the really dense effect that i'm, I'm trying to shoot for here let's see let's do if we add a stride here so i'm like really layering some um sample granulization stuff all together at different cycles here so striate gap and chop all at the same time i'm hoping this produces a more <laughs> Extreme effect. Uh, let's see how it goes. <laughs> yeah, those trills are kind of cool. So that's one thing I, I really like doing. And uh, in the the LP I've got coming up, I, I do this a lot where I, I layer, chop, gap, and stri striate all together. Um, and yeah, you, you get kind of these really dense um, things that, that, that get layered together uh, in different ways. And you have to kind of be careful, I guess, because you could... Um, really run into the max samples issue real quick. Um, all right, so this is kind of interesting. So now I'm a, I am like to overuse the, the fold every stuff and maybe I want to try slowing it down a little bit um, every so often and varying it up. Yeah. try let's maybe add some uh do a trunk in here so uh i use trunk a lot and trunk will repeat the the first like this percentage so in this case like the first 25 percent of the pattern or the first quarter of the pattern it'll just keep, keep repeating that over and over for two cycles uh let's just see what this sounds like <laughs> Uh, 
All right, yeah, that sounds pretty cool now. So I think uh, as soon as I added this slow 4.3 to the gap 16, then it, it started doing some cool stuff. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I just kind of, uh, yeah, I don't know. It, the interaction between chop, gap, and striate, sometimes you just have to kind of play with which one is, like they, they do, one of them might be doing something really cool and you just have to kind of figure out, um, I don't know. I'm trying to explain my thought process. I think Gap was doing something interesting, but almost to an extreme, like too much. And then as soon as I slowed it down, it kind of mellow mellowed that effect out a little bit and uh, made me happy. Yeah. All right. I want to take one more crack at this nested lambda. Um, so I think what I need to do is put the slow spread in here. Slow spread, and then Y. And then, then put the spren. Yeah, so if that's inside, then in here I could do Okay, so I want this Y to be here for the number of stutters. Try this maybe. Ha, huh, yes. All right, so question, does the dot chain things together? The answer is yes. Uh, and when you are inside of parens, let's do a simpler example. Um, so for example, if you've got um, you know, the kick drum pattern here, and so you, you use the dot syntax when you're inside parens. Um, it, it's, so if I did like slow two and speed two separated by a dollar sign, that, that's cool, right? But if I put it in parens, I have to use the dot like that. It's the exact same thing, uh, just uh, a same thing, different way to do it. Um, so if you want to combine two functions together at the same time, um, using parentheses, yeah, you'll need the dot. So in the case of stut, um, stut prime for, you know, I'm just making this up here, and then I need to pattern out like something I want to do on each stuttered sample. Um, if I want to chain multiple things together, I'll, I'll have to use the dot syntax, which is exactly what I'm doing right here. Okay, so this line 13 is, um, is really getting complex because I have two lambdas in the same, uh, one, I have a lambda nested within a lambda. So it's really cool and really hard to read. <laughs> um, and I'm not sure quite how to, I suppose I could indent this, huh? I don't know if Adam is gonna like it if I do that. So I've got one Lambda here, X, which is um, a slow spread on the duration or the, the time between the stuttered sample values, which is this list over here. And then I've got a lambda for the um, the number of stuttered values, this y, which is this list here, three, two, four. And then I can yeah, put some stuff in there. All right, so that's something kind of cool. Uh, the course, I think, is a little harsh, so I'm actually actually going to take the course out. All right, so that's kind of cool. The so I've got the percussion going. 
I've got this this Lerm synth sample going, and then the bass is going. Now the bass is kind of holding everything together because it's the only thing that's constant. Um, and I'm debating if I want to change that up much. You know, I think I do. So another thing that I've been doing way too much recently is automating the the delay. Um, so if I add a delay to this bass and just give it some feedback and delay length. Oh, what did I do? Oh, delay. Why is this not evaluating? I'm, I'm oh, interesting. So here in the, the Atom editor, if I put the hash, the new hash operator on a new line, it looks like it's thinking it's a comment. Oh, is it delay time? Did I actually forget? Oh, okay. Okay, so the base is now this. Can you hear that delay in there? So what I want to do is I actually want to automate the delay feedback and delay time to a really significant, um, to some extremes using a, a sign, uh, sign function. So delay time, I'm going to set to a scale between a very small value and then kind of a Maybe a normal value. Some so for uh, from 0. 0. 0.01 to 0. 0.3, and we'll just set that um, to a kind of a slowed sine function, and then the feedback I'm going to set to some extreme, extremely large amounts like 0. 0.7 and the 0. 0.98. If you set it to one, I think that's an infinite feedback. Which we don't want to do, and I'm just making up some values here. All right, so I'm scaling the feedback between two values and then scaling the delay time between two values. And I have a typo. What is the issue? I'm not seeing it. I do not see the problem. Huh. All right, yeah, so I can't. All right, so it looks like in the Atom editor for a title file, in, a, in the Atom package uh, for title in, uh, yeah, uh, it looks like the hash operator is not going to work. So I would have to do this, right? Yeah, you have to use the equals. All right. That's probably a, a fix we'll have to make to the, the package in um, the atom package for title. All right. Well, this, this delay is not quite having the as significant of an effect as I was hoping for. Tinted by one. Thank you. Thank you, Rob Jack. Like this. Yep. Yeah, okay. Cool. Thank you, sir. Um, okay. All right. So now I'm, I'm delaying the base. I don't know if this is quite what I'm going for. Um, I think what I might want to just do is stut stutter the bass as well uh, a little bit. So I'm going to get rid of that that double bass note and then and then can we do, I'll just do the ID right now. Is that is that? No, I can't do that. Oh, there we go. 
and make this a little shorter. Uh, I've got a question. Did I write or contribute to this library? I've wanted to go to a live programming show. Um, I've contributed to it. I am not a Haskell programmer, so I've done very little to contribute to the title source code. Uh, I've contributed a lot to the documentation and I've done some title uh, video tutorials, but I have not contributed. Um, I perform a lot in Minneapolis. If you're in the Minneapolis area, um, yeah, you can you can find me. <laughs> uh, I've actually got a gig this Friday at a at a at a projection show, which is kind of cool. Seattle. Uh, yeah, I don't know anybody in Seattle. There's there was a guy in um, uh, California. And he moved to upstate New York. But uh, yeah, I'm not aware of anybody in Seattle. There's a there's a gal in Vancouver named Laura, uh, Nora Lorway. Um, she does, she's a very active live coder in, in Vancouver. That's the closest I know of to Seattle. All right, so the baseline, let's see here. So let's let's uh, add to the speed here. Or the, let's let's add up. So a chromatic thing here. Yeah, that's fine. That's that's too bad. Let's let's see what this sounds like. Up in the main pattern. All right is getting sufficiently annoying which is which is a good sign all right i'm gonna add some kick drums because kick drums are cool i'm just gonna i'm just gonna do a just some random pattern here <laughs> All right, so, all right, I think I've got the components of what I'm looking for, and now is, so I, I think I'm, I'm nearly complete. This might be worthy of contributing to the, the repository and uploading at this point, but um, I'm one, the, now I'm at the crucial point of deciding, do I, do I wanna really glitch this out or not? <laughs> Usually the answer is yes, so so let's let's go for it. Uh, and I just realized I'm on camera and I'm probably doing silly things. Okay, uh, so when I want to go to extremes to to glitch stuff out, I usually do something like like here on lines 12, 13, and 14, where I'll, I'll chop, gap, and striate. Since I'm already doing that in this portion of the pattern, uh, I'll probably overdo things. Glitch it, yeah, we'll glitch it. Um, we could do, yeah, all right. So I, I, I'll take two approaches often. I'll do a slow spread, and then I'll put a list of um, stuff, uh, different effects and whatnot, different transforms. Uh, or I will go with like this every, approach where I will try and, and offset all kinds of different things. So we'll do like an accelerate one, one, maybe I'll do every six. I don't know. Um, every seven. Uh, I also like to abuse the fold every All right, well, uh, I'm just gonna start playing with this and see how it sounds here. All 
All right. Yeah, I'm gonna keep going. Here we go. Yeah, so with with the, the chat, uh, the the um the chop gap and stripe down here, and then by adding a, a chop and, or a gap up on top, kind of doubling up and, and uh, uh, things are getting chopped up a little bit too much. Um, yeah, we'll have we'll have Sean Lee take a look at that. I might be able to as well, uh, but I'm somewhat inexperienced with adding packages. Um, okay, so I was thinking of doing some more glitchy chopping, gapping, striding up a top for the entire pattern, but I think that's going to be a little too extreme. So let's, let's, uh, what's something else we could do? Um, I think we'll do something crazy. We'll do slow things down a little bit every once in a while. So I think that's actually a good stopping point. Um, I like it. So this is, uh, yeah, this is kind of the usual process I go through other than I, I don't narrate to myself. Um, but yeah, I think I'll, I'll do some more of these in the future, hopefully. hopefully. So next time we'll do 441. So this was pattern 440. I will, uh, I'll record this separate. I'm not gonna record this at the moment. And uh, yeah, you know what? What the hell? We'll we'll go go ahead and do that now. So I've got everything going through FL Studio, and I get my my nice voice here on on four, and then uh, all the pattern is actually playing on this dirt channel here. Just to show that this right there. <laughs> Okay, so I think what I'll do is I will bring the level up. So I'm going to record it at a louder volume, and then uh, I'm just going to record the master here. And uh, no, it won't let me. There we go. Oh, wrong button. There we go. Okay, so I'm going to mute myself while I record. And we'll just see how it sounds yeah so this is like the this is the whole production process i i often go through i don't always always use fl studio to record sometimes i use audacity um but in this case we'll just do it like this so i'm going to mute the mic and then we'll re record for about a minute here so i will see you in about 60 seconds You know what? We'll keep the stream going, and uh, I will now 
take take this and I'll trim it up. And right there. That was the end look. Trim that up. And we will export this and we will put it in our archive folder. Oops. So every pattern I've ever recorded happens to be saved. So one caveat is that I am um, <laughs> Acid Nintendo, yes. <laughs> um, I've actually got patterns 436 through 439 already programmed. I just haven't recorded them yet. So I might go ahead and just post this and then I'll, I'll go back and record the others later and post those later. Um, but I'll do this one now since, uh, since we're all here. All right. And let's go to SoundCloud. And oh, best drops ever, how they recommended. Also follow Spednar, another title user. Uh, okay, so let's go to our file and upload so pattern 440 doing it live oh okay man this is gonna be a longer stream than i expected so very very important part of uploading a, a title pattern is to create an image so i always use the force to create an image so we will go out to the force here sean lawson github.io the force and i am not going to really explain what the hell i'm doing here because i don't know this that well but it's just fun to use and so basically this is a, a visual live coding language and um, I'm going to make a crazy image out of this. That's, that's what I'm going to do. And I'll do green. Yeah. Christmas colors. Let's change this to orange. Yeah, there we go. That's looking cool. You know what? That's good. I'm going to take a screenshot of that right now. Excellent. Oh, we're going to actually increase the pixel size. Save it. And then, uh, yeah, OK. Go to downloads. Oh. I'll take the bigger one here. It's no big deal. I just like having a custom image. All right, pattern is live. That's it. I, I could have done something a lot cooler with uh, the force here. Um, you know what? Just because we're streaming, I will. So I'm going to rotate around here. Yeah, we'll rotate that orange. Nice. Nice. Uh, it's really cool. It's also sound responsive if you want to use a microphone. Um, yeah, you can really get crazy with this stuff. Um, yeah, look at that. Beautiful. Okay. All right. Enough of that. Custom image pattern is live. It's now on SoundCloud. You can, if you are viewing the stream right now and you, you helped in any way, like, like Rob Jack did in uh, the chat room here. Uh, you can say that you contributed to this pattern, and uh, I sincerely appreciate that. So, <laughs> uh, all right, well, that's it. So thanks for watching, and uh, I'll do another one of these another time. Thanks. See you. Bye.